and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I plan my homeschooling week. I am so excited about today's video um, just because I really love watching these videos, seeing how different homeschooling moms plan their weeks. I love seeing uh, the moms who just are open and go free willy nilly. And I love seeing also too the moms that have everything planned out from the minute. I really feel like I can take away from both of those styles. And I really hope that in today's video, that you guys can take away from how I plan my homeschooling week and hopefully it can help any of you guys out there. So if you're interested in seeing how I plan my homeschool week, then go ahead and stay tuned for today's video. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I have a nine, three and a one year old and I'm in my second year of homeschooling. My homeschooling year started off pretty rocky this second year, but you guys, things have smoothed out and I really feel like it's because of how I plan our homeschooling week and how I keep things simple and open and flexible for change that has really helped me um, along my homeschooling journey. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this camera around and I'm gonna show you guys all of the ins and the outs and how I plan my homeschooling week. Okay, you guys, so I have all of my teacher's guides right here that I use. Well, some of my teacher guides right here in this um, magazine file that I use. And I have my planner right here. And I am ready to go ahead and start planning our homeschooling week. We just came back from vacation. We had our first quarter break, so we completed our first eight weeks of homeschooling, and now we are going into our ninth week tomorrow. So it's Sunday. I typically do all of my planning on Sunday nights, but I had to film this video for you guys in the daytime so you can actually see what's going on. So um, yeah. So what I do is, the first thing I do is I go onto Google Docs and I type up like some of my goals that I have for our homeschooling week. So before we went on vacation, I just went on Google Docs and I just typed in week nine and 10 and some of the goals that I have for us to reach for those weeks. And then what I do is I'll translate this right here into my planner so I can have something to check off at the end of the week to see if we reached our goal, if we didn't, if not, it'll just get shifted to the next week. It's really not a big deal. I just like to have some sort of a plan. So that is pretty much how I do it. So the first thing that I have here is I'm going to look inside of my Abeka Arithmetic 4 um, answer key for my daughter Brielle and who's in the fourth grade. I'm just going to look in here to see what lessons she's going to be doing this week. We typically do five math lessons a week and I'll just see if she's going to be learning a new concept, if it's going to be something review. Um, I'm going to see the days that I'm going to have to teach her the lesson versus the days where she can just open up her workbook and do it on her own. So that is what I do. I typically would just look through here, see if it's anything new and kind of like go from there. Okay, so my daughter is actually on lesson 24 right now, and I look through the five lessons she's going to be doing this week, which is going to be lessons 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28, and it's nothing new she's going to be learning. This is really going to be a review for her. She did a, a Becca Arithmetic 3 last year. We went through one math change this year. We started off using um singapore dimensions math and within our first three weeks of homeschooling we switched back to um rebecca arithmetic four so she's not quite at the lesson that she would be with us doing eight weeks of school which is no problem um we're going to get caught back up it's not really a big deal because sometimes she can do two of these math lessons at once so since rebecca is still giving her that review she's not going to be learning anything until um lesson 33 I'm just gonna go ahead in my planner, I'm gonna go ahead and write down um, all of the math lessons that I have for us to do for this week.
Okay, you guys, along with the Abeka Arithmetic 4, I do let my daughter use the Abeka Arithmetic Tests and Speed Drills. And I just looked in my teacher guide and I see she's going to actually be doing, let's see if she's going to be doing a test this week no test this week i typically don't let her like do the quizzes or whatever because i feel like with me seeing her do the lessons i can see if she is getting the concept or not but i do like for her to do the test just because it's a good marker for me to see if she mastered that concept before we go on to our next set of uh, work and also too i like to keep her test for record keeping i know within the state of georgia uh, we typically don't have to keep or we don't have to keep a portfolio however just for my comfort i love keeping um some of her sample lessons for each of her um subjects just for um my personal uh i guess comfort <laughs> so um i will be making a separate video for you guys showing you how i file her portfolio because a lot of you guys have been asking so when i get towards the end of this quarter i will have enough stuff to file away for our first semester and then i can show you guys um how i start that process so um yeah so she doesn't have any tests uh, this week, but she will have, um, let me see if I can show it to you guys. Here we go. So she will have some speed drills. So this is speed drill 24 and 25. And then also to she will have um, speed drill 26 and 28 because 27 is a quiz and I'm not going to make her do the quiz. So that is everything as far as math goes. I really could have just opened this and go and I uh, just gave her the next lesson, but I just kind of like to, you know, breeze through it, look and see if it's anything new, look and see if she has a test, um, just to prepare me for the week. So math is all checked off. Now we're going to go into language arts. Okay, you guys, first off with language arts is spelling. We are using Evan Moore building spelling. Spelling. and a lot of these spelling lists in here you guys I'm not gonna lie like my daughter is really good at spelling I went ahead and I bought her um, grade level six because I looked through the fifth grade spelling words and they're not challenging enough for her but it's a few concepts in here that I want to make sure she um, knows as far as like vocabulary and things like that so um, I am sticking with level four with her however I'm just going over the weeks in which that I feel like we need to cover so we're pretty much towards the end of this spelling book or I should say in the middle we are actually going to be going into week number 13 for her spelling list and um, this is pretty self-explanatory for Brielle she can just open this up and go she doesn't need me um, but I do just like to write down in my planner what week I have for us to do we're probably going to be finished this spelling book by the end of this semester and once she finishes this spelling book I'm not going to give her any more spelling for the year um, I'm seeing that she really needs to be focused more on like vocabulary so we will go ahead and go into our wordly wise vocabulary for second semester and she would do that then so Evan more spelling we're gonna be in week 13 I'm gonna go ahead and write that down in my planner right here okay you guys for language arts we use language lessons for 11 education level 5 for her but you guys I found <laughs> rod and staff at the thrift store for 13 bucks I got the teacher's manual and I got the um, student book and you guys why does my daughter love this? Uh, these uh, lessons in Rod and Staff. This is an old, I believe it's either an old Mennonite curriculum, and it's really simple. Um, the lessons are like really simple. It's like black and white. She has like her oral drill, and then she has like a few written problems. For the most part, we just go in and we do the oral drills. I might have her do some of the written work, but this, these lessons within this Rod and Staff building with Diligence English, it takes us 10 minutes. So in total with her doing master books and Rod and Staff, I mean, it's like 20 minutes of English and she loves it. English is her favorite subject and um, she likes it. So I'm just going to give it to her. So <laughs> she enjoys Rod and Staff and master books. I know it may be redundant for some, but this is her favorite subject. And um, yeah, so I think within Rod and Staff, since I just picked this one up from the thrift store we are going into lesson number seven so we're going to be talking about complete subjects and simple subjects it's a small oral drill right here and then it is 
um, a little written drill. And sometimes within the written drills, I just give it to her orally. I let her show me where we are going to be dividing up um, her sentence diagrams. I tell her to point to the um, complete subject, com point to the complete predicate. And by doing it that way, it's eliminating her from actually writing. And this is just pretty much used as like an oral drill. So she really loves these and um, I've been enjoying it too. So. Um, we are going to be doing, I'm just gonna go ahead and just write seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I'm just gonna write seven, eight, and nine. And if we do more, that's perfectly fine. But again, she likes this old um, English curriculum and you guys, like whatever makes my daughter happy, I really don't mind as long as she's getting English. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in my planner right here that we're gonna shoot to do. Uh, Rod and Staff Lessons, Oral Drills 7, 8, and 9. Now, as far as Master Book goes, my daughter, she started this um, in our third week of homeschooling. So, um, she is doing pretty good with this. She goes through these lessons on her own. And let's see where we're at. We don't do the spelling in master books because we do the Evan Moore spelling. Sometimes she just still likes to do it and I let her because again, English is her favorite subject and um, I'm not gonna stop her. If she wants to do more work, then okay. <laughs> but um, within master books, we are going into lesson, let's see. Okay, here we are. So we're on day number 28. So typically I'll just do like five lessons uh, and I'll schedule it, but she always does more. So whatever she wants to do, that's fine. But I just go ahead and write the next five lessons. So in my case, it'll be day 28, 29. Um, I'm not gonna have her do the spelling. And then it'll be day 31, 32. So we can end off the week in master books on 32 again like i said she typically does like two lessons a day so she might end up doing more i'll just document it within my google docs of what we actually accomplished on week nine at the end of the week um like i said i don't stop her i just let her do it and she loves it so <laughs> master books has definitely been like a win in my household and i'm so happy that i just went back to what we knew and i just went back to something that my daughter loves so i'm gonna go ahead and write that down in my planner um, just a simple goal as far as master books okay you guys the next course subject we are going to be doing is science and history so for science I do science two days out the week and I do history two days out the week this week is gonna be a little bit different because tomorrow I have to go to an allergy appointment for my daughter Leia at 1.30. So that's typically the time we homeschool and get our core subjects done is when my two younger ones are taking a nap. So I know we're probably only going to have um, either one science or history or two histories and one science. So I think this week, because last week or our last quarter week, we didn't have a lot of, or we didn't do a lot of um, history um, I think that this is going to be a heavier history week. So I'm only going to schedule for us to do one lesson within our um, God's Design for Life by uh, Masterbooks. We are doing the World of Animals. We didn't finish our lesson. What lesson were we on? Let's see. Here it goes. So we didn't finish lesson number five. We are talking about monkeys and apes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, um, we're probably going to go ahead and start off with just lesson five this week. So that's the only thing I want to schedule for us to do. I did find a really cool documentary on Disney uh, plus on um, monkeys that we're going to watch this week. So I think that that'll be like a really good uh, compilation with this lesson since we are only going to be doing one science lesson this week. So that is what we're going to be doing for this. Now within the God's Design for Life world of animals, they do have them doing like a project that they're going to be working on. So here, let me go ahead and grab her project that she's working on right now. 
Okay, so this is my daughter's project that she's working on for the world of animals. Since we did um, marine biology last year and we are doing an Africa unit study, I have allowed her to choose 10 African or 10 um, African mammals that she can d dive deeper into to uh, research on. I found this cute little template right here from Teachers Pay Teachers. So she writes about the animals. Um, she writes about the animal's name, weight, length, their family, and group. Then she locates their um, specific habitat. And of course, all these habitats are gonna be Africa. <laughs> then she writes about the animal's diet, their life cycle, their behavior, and then just some interesting facts. So this is um, her first mammals report that she did on zebras. So she just has to finish writing about the behavior and interest and facts about zebras and she can just do this on her own time um, so she can continuously work on her African mammals project. So I'm gonna go ahead and schedule this for Brielle to do. Um, just any time throughout the week that she has extra time to pick this up, I will have her go ahead and do it since it is gonna be a lighter science week for us. Okay, you guys, let's see. I have math, language arts, spelling, and science. So right now I have to see what we're going to be doing for our amazing Africa. Okay, so this is what we're actually doing for our geography slash history study for our first semester, which is the Amazing Africa Heritage Pack by Amber O'Neill Johnston. Right now, we are actually doing Ethiopia. So um, the only thing, this is pretty much open and go as far as her lesson plans. It really just tells me the books that we're going to read. So we're going to be reading, here I have all the books right here. So this week... For Ethiopia, we're going to be reading Wherever I Go. We're gonna be reading about Ethiopia in Africa, Amazing Africa. We're gonna also be reading The Perfect Orange. And then we're going to be reading about Ethiopia in Africa is Not a Country. So that pretty much sums up Africa. It's pretty simple. It's really Charlotte Mason inspired. We read, we talk about it. Um, it has video links that we're gonna be watching. And this is like perfect for us to do in the morning time with my two toddlers. Um, they watch the videos, they get a kick out of them too. So um, this is really, I guess I could say it's a kind of like a family subject because um, we can just sit down on the couch and do this amazing Africa study and it's been beautiful. After we do do a country, I will um, give my daughter like the country's flag and she'll write like a paragraph about something she's learned about that country um so this week like i said since we didn't do much of africa we may shoot to go through three um countries this week or yeah three yeah three countries this week within the continent of africa so um that's what i'm going to schedule for us if we get it done cool if not it's all good <laughs> again she loves this i love this and this is something we do in the morning right after our um reading time where are we on you guys let's see let's see so we're going to be doing weeks number 11 12 and 13. Okay, you guys, the last thing that I plan for, which is always the first thing we do each morning, is our Bible and our reading time. So we are actually using the Characters Matters cards from September & Co. The characters we've gone through so far has been compassion, diligence, honesty, and faithfulness. So I think we're going to go ahead and uh, review those characters, but I do want to add one more character for the week. So I think we're going to possibly add in, let's see. Our next character is actually forgiveness. So we're going to be talking about forgiveness this week. So that is the character I'm going to write down in my goals for the week. We always use this little devotional called How God Grows a Courageous Girl. This is amazing. My daughter reads it to me. We talk about it. So this is also part of our Bible time. And we also read our Sabbath school lesson. We are on lesson number, let's see. Yeah, we're on our lesson number two. So we just read over our Sabbath school lesson. We discuss it. We talk about the message and the memory verse. And then the last thing we do is 
I got this book for my daughter and it talks about God's 10 promises and it just goes over the 10 commandments. Within her Sabbath school lesson, we are in the Old Testament and we're talking about Moses and Joshua. So it's really fitting that we're going through each of the 10 commandments and this book pretty much explains to her what the commandments are, what they mean, and it really breaks it down in a, in a manner in which she as a nine-year-old can understand. So everything like as far as Bible, it all goes together. For our read aloud, we are reading Pax and we are on chapter number 14. So we're gonna, we, I strive to read at least one chapter every day, Monday through Friday. I'm really hoping that within these next two weeks, we will be all done with Pax. So the last thing I have to do, you guys, is I have this little teeny book right here and I go ahead and I put in like, um, hopefully you can see this, let's see. I write like our daily plan that I have for my daughter. I put like little stickers and stuff like here on her book and I write this out every uh, evening before I set our homeschooling table. So I'm gonna go ahead right now and I'm gonna write out what we're gonna, what I have planned for her to do on Monday. Again, Monday is gonna be a lighter day because I do have to take my daughter to an allergy appointment. So for the most part, Monday, we are only going to be doing Bible and reading together. The rest of the time, my daughter is going to to work pretty independently. Probably the only thing she's gonna work with me with is a little bit of English and when I check her math work. And I'll probably do that when I come back from my daughter's allergy appointment. So for the most part, she will be on her own. She can read what she has to do and she'll get it done. Okay, you guys, my daughter, she loves stickers. So I have all of these stickers right here so I can fill out her little notebook for tomorrow. And all I do is I look at my, um, plan for the week and that's how I know what to write down daily on her little notebook right here or her little makeshift agenda um so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and fill out everything just copying from my planner to here and I don't do this um all at once I just take my time and do one day at a time because if she doesn't get to a lesson or anything like that I don't want to have to rewrite the whole week <laughs> even though I do use erasable pen I just write this the night before um or whatever like I said sometimes she does do multiple language arts lessons math lessons um so yeah I just do this um each day and then she looks forward to looking at each day to see what stickers or what I wrote on her little book so yeah One thing I forgot to mention to you guys is that we do a four day week schedule and this plan that I showed you, I just take all of these things that I want to accomplish and I divide it up by four days. Friday is our fun art poetry tea time. She may have a math lesson and that's it. So the other thing that we're gonna be doing this week is we're gonna be doing creative writing and we're gonna be focusing on poetry. Our poet this week is gonna be Maya Angelou. I forgot to mention you guys that I am going to start Curly Preschool Fall with my uh, daughter Leia this week. I'm really excited. Um, let me see, I have, sorry about the mess in here. I went ahead and I checked out some of the books that I need for us. And I think this right here is the book that we're going to use this week when we talk about how to grow apples, um, or how do apples grow. So um, we're gonna read through this book. Um, and then I think the other book is Apple Farmer Annie, I believe. Let me just double check in here. Cause I think I ordered that book from Amazon. Here, yeah, Apple Farmer Annie. So those are the two books that we're going to be doing for um, this Apple unit right here. Um, I'm really excited for us to uh, dive into this one with her, um, especially during fall time. I really love Purely Preschool because you guys, I can do these little lessons with my uh, three-year-old in like 10 minutes. She loves it. She has fun and I feel like it's perfect. And I feel like I'm not overwhelmed with all the other homeschool stuff that I have to do for Brielle. So um, yeah, so I have our um, health and science cards ready to go and laminated and we are all set to go to do our apples unit in our purely preschool for um, Leia. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, seeing how I plant my homeschooling week. I really hope that it has been encouraging and inspiring to any of you guys out there. As always, thank you so much for watching today's video. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.